To drill the holes, I'm going to be using the pin vise that we showed you earlier. This has got a nice swivel top on it. It's really comfortable to use. And I'm going to install my 2 millimeter drill bit in here. And when I'm drilling this, I want to make sure that I'm not bearing down on it because this clay is very, very soft. It's, it's, um, it's got some sturdiness to it, but it's kind of like a cookie in a way. You can snap it really easily. So you never want to bear down on it. You want to just be very, very gentle and go really, really slow. So I'm just positioning my drill bit in the little divot that I made when the clay was wet. And I'm going to go very, very slow. I'm just going to get it started here. I don't want to go all the way through because the block that I'm working on is a rubber block and if I was to drill down into the rubber I would get rubber particles and then I wouldn't be able to reuse my clay because what I'm doing with all these little scraps here and I want to keep them clean and uncontaminated is I'm going to put them in my paste jar and I'm going to reuse these again. Um, and I want to be very, very careful and go very slow with this because I don't want to break the piece, especially now that it's hanging over the edge. So I'm just going to go slow and careful and I don't worry about how long it takes. I just want to make sure that it goes through. You can see sometimes the drill bit gets a little bound up and you want to make sure that you don't push it at that point. So now I'm ready to fire my pieces and I'm going to do one of these uh, by torch. I'm just going to put a soldering board on top of my little standard soldering station. Here's the piece that we're going to fire. I'm using my micro torch for this and I've adjusted it so that the flame is as large as it will get. I want to bathe this piece in flame and I want to do it evenly and I don't want a pointy flame. I want some big bushy flame as big as I can get here. And you can see here that this is started on fire and that's the binder burning away and that just lasts for a couple of seconds. And then the idea is to keep the flame moving so that I'm heating everything evenly. And I'm looking for a sort of a pinky salmon glow. It'll look like it's glowing from the inside. And that color means that we have reached the temperature um, of centering and centering is how this clay becomes um, a solid metal and right there is that salmon color and I want to maintain this color. I don't want to get redder than that and I want to make sure that it's at least this color because if it's not, if it turns white, here you can see it a little bit better, I've shaded the light. Um, if it turns white you're not actually firing the clay, you're just heating it but, but below the temperature where it will become solid metal so it would be very very brittle if you didn't maintain this color the entire time that you're firing. And keep in mind that PMC Plus and PMC3 are the only versions of the clay that can be torch fired. Standard PMC can only be fired in um, a kiln. So because I'm using PMC Plus, I need to hold this for 10 minutes. If I was using PMC3, I could get away with holding it for just two minutes. Now my firing is complete and I need to allow this piece to cool. It is going to be very, very hot for several minutes. Don't pick it up with your fingers. Even if it looks like there's no more red glow, it can be very, very hot and burn you seriously. So if you're going to move it, pick it up with tweezers. You can quench it in water, but don't try to handle it with your hands. Now I'm ready to begin the finishing process. I'm going to start by burnishing the surface of the metal clay with this brass buff. It's really, really soft bristles. It doesn't hurt running directly over my fingers. And the reason the clay comes out looking kind of white um, after it's been fired is because the binder has burned off and sort of left uh, some silver particles all alone standing up. And what we're going to doing with this burnishing is we are laying them back down and we're compacting the surface. So I want to make sure that it's burnished completely. I don't want to see any white anywhere. I want to scrub this really well, make sure everything is laid down and that I've got a nice silver look to the whole entire piece. And when I'm finished with that, I'm going to go ahead and put this in the tumbler for about two hours. I could hand finish or tumble, but for this piece, I think tumbling would be so much easier. I've applied a liver of sulfur patina here to oxidize this piece. We have a video available on that if you're not familiar with um, adding a patina and it's very simple to do. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and polish off the high spots on this piece here. And I'm using my 3M polishing papers. I'm starting with the 400 grit.
And all they're getting to is the high spots, which is just what we want. We want to have the, the recesses dark and the high spots nice and polished. So I start with my 400 grit and then I'm going to move through each of the papers until I reach my 8000 grit. And that'll make our high spots really nice and shiny and the low spots will remain dark. And finally, after we've completed all of the, going through all the polishing papers, you'll want to polish this um, with a polishing cloth an anti-tarnish polishing cloth or a selvet works great. So now to assemble this piece we just need to put it on an ear wire, um, twist the ear wire to open it, and close it back up and our piece is now completed.